What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Johnny K Picks. And in this video, I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC Vegas 97 Burns versus Brady. Now, first things first, please hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't yet and turn on those notifications so you know when I put on my videos. I'm, gonna, I'm putting this video out a little early for everyone. Um, also, when we go live, so it's always good to have those on. Leave some comments below how well you did at UFC Vegas 96, I believe it was last time. It's been a week off, so I'm a little off. Um, what bet you're looking at? This is going to be a pretty solid card, actually, for a fight night. And um, also check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Johnny K Picks. I put out all my early bets, picks, um, UFC cheat sheets, betting cheat sheets, uh, time prop cheat sheets. I also do... Um, Soccer just started, or footy, if you want to say. So footy's going on, so I'm doing bets with that. Uh, NCAA uh, college football just started, too, so I'm doing some of those. So definitely check it out, $5.99 a month to become a core member, or you can join for free for a free content as well. So, yeah, uh, last week, or a couple weeks ago now, was UFC Vegas 96. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to dive too much into it. I actually was only able to watch a couple of those fights, nothing crazy. I did watch Morales destroy uh, Magni. Um, also, um, I saw some of the highlights of Kyo looking good in the, in the fifth round and dropped Jared. So, um, looked like a pretty cool card, I think, but, um, let's go to my bets for that real quick. I think for my picks, I ended up going seven and four on them because one fight got canceled at the very last second, but here it is right here. I had bazooka, um, didn't watch that fight, but I, I heard that he wasn't that great. So it is what it is. Uh, won the parlay of Baraljo and, uh, Morales. That was my first bet of the week. Biggest bet as well. 2.5 units for that parlay. Um, also had the over two and a half rounds in the Morales fight. I did not think uh, Morales would destroy Magni in the first round because Magni is very durable except that fight. So that one missed out, but I, I hit on this fight starts round three for Kyle. That was a uh, paired up with Fletcher. That's fighting this week. We'll get to that in a second. So that's why it only looks like minus 340. I left it going. So I won a little bit there. Nothing crazy. And then uh, my time prop parlay hit as well. So 1.24 units profit. Not going to complain whatsoever. It was a tough uh, car to bet on. That's why I only had five bets. And um, yeah, we'll, I like a lot of bets in this one. But the lines aren't looking great. But I do like a lot of good spots. So um we'll look forward to this one like i said ufc vegas 97 we'll jump right into it we're not gonna mess around first fight um it's gonna be the fight that should have started uh or should have happened last week and that was i'm gonna butcher his last name and it's gonna be uh zigamontis versus zigamontis ramaska versus nathan fletcher so I wasn't able to break down this um, fight for my uh, video last week. I just put a little comment there, so I get to break it down now. So both these guys are making their UFC debut. They're from Tough, uh, but Ramaska, you know, he's a good striker. He's got good power. He's dangerous on the feet. The thing about him, though, like his takedown defense isn't great, and he can get taken down pretty easily, get controlled as well. Um, he's not like a fish out of water when he's on the mat or when he's on his back, but he, he kind of does struggle a bit against good grapplers anyways, or good wrestlers that to get back up, but he's very good on the feet though. Very dangerous as well. Good cardio, uh, Fletcher, well-rounded guy. I would say he's a better grappler than striker, but he is a solid striker. Uh, good cardio, good takedowns, uh, good, uh, submissions as well. Um, the only red flag with me is he's the one that pulled out of the fight. Um, a couple weeks ago at Vegas 96, I think he might've had, I've seen staph infection, maybe some other injury, but you know, two weeks later he's fighting now. So maybe um, he's feeling better and stuff. So I don't think that they would put him out there if it was a major injury that er this early. So that's the only little red flag here because I did have Fletcher in that parlay, like I said earlier. So I'm going with Fletcher. Um, the line is a little bit uh, closer than it was before. I think Fletcher was at minus 175 range or so. Uh, last time, now it's at minus 130, 135. So maybe people are thinking on the other side because of that maybe staph infection or whatever, or injury maybe. But going with Fletcher, again, I'm just going to trust that maybe it was staph infection. Maybe he was on antibiotics and, um, you know, maybe he just didn't feel good enough to fight or whatever you want to say. So 
Um, going to go with Fletcher. I just think he's a better grappler and he's going to be able to control uh, Ramaska. And, and when it's on the feet, I think Fletcher's going to be okay. I, I mean, maybe he won't, I don't think he's going to like, like knock out Ramaska by any means, but I do think he can get a submission late in this fight or win a decision, just winning the minutes and getting the takedowns and controlling him that way. So give me Fletcher to win. I'll say by decision, but uh, maybe second or third round submission is a good look too. So um, we'll see what the line when it does come out. I believe, like I said, I think it is minus 130 or so, minus 135. Not a bad line, but you just got to worry about that little red flag we, I just talked about. Next one's going to be Andre Petrosky versus Dylan Budka. And yeah, both these guys are wrestler grappler types, but Petrosky, we all know who he is. Good, very good wrestler, good takedowns, good grappling. He has like two kinds of cardio. Uh, cardio on the feet does not look good after a round, round and a half, but his cardio on the ground for all three rounds looks, looks amazing. Very good submissions, good anaconda choke, good uh, Darce choke, good front chokes. Um, he does have some power on the feet, but he throws just like one punch at a time. He's not very technical. Um, and like I said, his cardio when he's on his feet kind of fades. He gets a little sloppy on the feet, kind of hittable sometimes. But if he does get that takedown, it just seems like it's a totally different gas tank. Budka, though, he's a very good a wrestler himself. Good takedowns, good grappler. He's more so position over submission. And Petrovsky's more submission over position. But he did show very good dominance and good control in his last fight against uh, Josh Frem. He was able to control him on the map for most of that fight. But, um, you know, his striking is just okay as well. He does have power in his hands. So, like I said, both these guys are kind of the same style of fighters. But I think Petrovsky at, at this point in their careers is better. Um, now, if these guys fought five years, we'll even say like three years later. Like, Budka's very young. He's 24 years old. Three years later now, now Petrovsky 36, Budka's 27. Maybe I would go Budka because maybe he's improving more. But Petrovsky right now, I think he's the better grappler. I think he's the better wrestler. And he should be able to potentially get a late finish submission. But also, I can see him controlling him on the mat for three rounds and winning a decision. So give me Petrovsky to win. Pretty confident. I know the line's a little wide. It's not minus 280 anymore. It's like minus 350. But, I mean, I think he's going to win. I mean. So I think he's safe for a parlay piece. I know a lot of people don't like, um, you know, he, he might be a little untrustworthy, but Budka's not Michelle Pereira. Budka's not Jacob Malkoon. And that was a freak KO. Like Pereira lit him up on the feet early because he's super quick. Like Budka's not that guy. And those are the guys that Petrosky has trouble with. So Petrosky, I'll say... Uh, I want to I want to say submission. I'm going to go submission. I'll go second round submission. Why not? Uh, next fight here, Jacqueline Amorium versus Vanessa Demopoulos, everyone's favorite. Uh, Amorium's a very good grappler. She's got very good submissions. Uh, her striking is just okay. She does have some uh, pop in her hands if she does land. Decent takedowns. Her cardio can be a little bit of an issue, but, you know, she looked good in, I think it was uh, this fight against Ruiz. She did, it did take her a little bit longer, but Ruiz is very small. So she was able to like dominate her. Uh, McKenna, you know, that pretty decent win there too, but McKenna doesn't seem like she has the greatest fight IQ either. So Sam Hughes was a very tough fight for her. You know, she looked like she had that submission in the first round and she kind of just gassed after that. But Vanessa Demopoulos, you know, I would say she's a, She's a little dog and she has a little dog in her. She's an okay striker. She gets hit a lot, but she's has a good, good grappling, good submissions. Her takedowns are just okay. Um, hittable on the feet though, but she's very tough, good cardio. And, uh, she has some good submissions on her own, on her back and all that good stuff. So, uh, I would say battle of the grapplers. Um, I think Amorum is the better grappler, but on the feet, this is what worries me a little bit because I just don't think Jacqueline's, striking be, either of these girls are striking is all that great but i do favor vanessa on the feet a little bit um and also the cardio i do favor a little bit vanessa but for some reason i feel like this fight's gonna play out on the mat for the majority of this fight and i and i, and I, ugh, I can't talk sorry guys and if i if that happens i do like amorum to win so i'm gonna pick amorum um would it shock me if vanessa somehow wins a split decision no, because that's how she wins. Split decision against Dakota, which was a very close fight. I actually kind of thought Dakota won. Um, this should have been a split decision. I actually kind of thought Murata might have won that fight. She was controlled on the map for the majority of that whole fight. 
She got dominated by Carolina. She did very good against Marina Oliveira, but Maria Oliveira is not that great. And a split decision to, to Frey, which I don't think she might have won that fight either. So this is one of those fights where I'm probably going to stay away because I just don't trust the judging. They love Vanessa for whatever reason, but I'm going to go with Amorim. I think she's going to be the better grappler, and I do think this fight will play out on the mat. Um, I'm going to go... I'm going to go decision. And that's weird that I just said that. It's going to play on the map. But I don't think it's a decision. Because I said, Vanessa's very tough. Durable. Uh, next fight. We've got Gabriel Santos versus uh, Yiza, I'm going to say. Uh, Santos, aggressive striker with good power. He, come, he likes to push forward. He's hittable on the feet, though. Good takedowns. He's got very good grappling, good submissions. Um, tough couple fights for him. Entering the UFC, David Onama, very tough fight. Lerone Murphy, very tough fight. Made it very close. Arguably, maybe could have won that fight, too. So, he's fought two very, very good guys. But he's very talented. Super dangerous on the feet. And, uh, yeah, he's from I think he's from Shoot the Box. No, he's not. But I thought he was. Uh, he's a good grappler. Her, his takedowns are, you know, okay. We saw in his last fight um, against... Lee, it was a very close uh, fight, but he didn't end up winning that one. Uh, decent in the clinch, good submissions. He does have trouble keeping his opponents down. If he does get the takedown, his striking is just okay, too. So he's more so a grappler, wants to hold you up against the cage and get you down. If he can, work his submissions. So I think the better overall fighter here is obvious, obviously going to be Santos. So I'm picking Santos to win. Wouldn't shock me if it's by KO or submission. Um I'm going to go, I'll say Santos by KO, maybe second round. Um, I just think he's going to be a better grappler too. So I think he's more dangerous. I think he's going to have better cardio as well. And um, yeah, I trust him a little bit more than Yiza here. So give me Santos to win. I'll say second or third round KO, maybe later in this fight. But it wouldn't shock me if it's a submission either. Maybe club and sub. Next one is going to be Andre Lima versus Felipe Dos Santos. And... Lima is a very good striker, a good Muay Thai striker, good combos, good takedown defense. He does have a pretty decent get-up game if he is taken down. Um, he's not really um, the greatest wrestler or grappler, but also we've seen in one of his fights, um, if he is pushed a little hard, he can tire out a little bit. Um, the Igor fight was one of them, but that's ended in disqualification. It was a very fun fight for however long it lasted until that happened, but Mitch Raposo, that fight, he can be taken down. So that's something you got to think of, but he's a very good striker. Uh, Dos Santos is well-rounded, um, good striking. He pushes forward. He's from shoot to box I know that for a fact. Um, let's see. He's a, He can be a little hittable when he gets a little too aggressive. Um, he can be taken down. I think he's got good grappling, but we really haven't seen it too much in the UFC. He's very young at 23. Um, the Victor Altamirano fight was a little dicey. He may or may not have won that one. Um, very, very fun fight with Manila Cop. So he looked good in this one in a loss, and he looked kind of bad in, in a win. So that's probably just the youth right there. Just he's a little green. So both these guys, you know, they're newer in their MMA careers. So this is a close fight. Like, but I'm going to ever so slightly give San Do Dos Santos the edge here. I think if he works some of his grappling and mixes it up and doesn't make this a straight up striking fight, I think he's going to win a decision. I think this fight's going to go decision no matter what. So I'm going to, I like the overs in this spot if you don't want to pick a side, but Lima, like, like I said, very good striker on the feet. So I don't know if Dos Santos is going to be able to outstrike Lima unless he mixes in the grappling and the wrestling and try to take him down, which I do think he can take him down. So give me Dos Santos to win by decision. It's going to be very close, probably a split decision, but it wouldn't shock me if Lima just outstrikes him for three rounds and wins a decision that way too. So Dos Santos is going to have to have a good game plan in this fight. He can't just strike with him like he did against Manal Cop and... um even Victor Altamirano. Victor Altamirano is shooting the takedowns. So give me Dos Santos to win, I hope, as a dog. And um, I think the line's a little bit wider than this, unless it just moved on me and I didn't look. But like I said, by decision. 
Next one is going to be a bloodbath. We got Isaac Dolgarian versus Brendan um, Murat. And uh, Isaac Dolgarian got robbed in his last fight against C-Rod. I'm going to say it now and get that out of the way. Uh, but he's a very good wrestler, very good takedowns, very explosive, very dangerous. His striking is pretty good. He uses his striking to set up his takedowns. Very good ground and pound. Um, he had, his cardio is a little bit of a concern, as we saw in his last fight. He went all out in the first round against Christian Rodriguez and got a 10-8. Um, and then he kind of... I don't want to say death gas, but he almost death gassed in the third round. He almost gave up, but he didn't. He's very tough and durable. So Murat, though, he's well-rounded. Pretty, You know, he's not great anywhere, and I wouldn't even say he's good anywhere, but he's just, well, like I said, well-rounded guy. Okay striking. He's got okay wrestling, okay grappling. He is hittable on the feet, though. Power iffy. You know what I mean? Uh, Terrence McKinney was able to get him out of there early. I think he took that fight on short notice, but, you know, he's – He's beating the guys that he should on the regional scene. But, um, yeah, I think this is all day, every day. Dolgari, and I think he gets a first or second round, uh, probably ground and pound finish or maybe even a submission um, on the mat. I think he's going to go for that wrestling, and he's going to show everyone why he should have won against C-Rod. So give me Dolgarian first or second round knockout. Next one's going to be Ovin St. Pru versus Ryan Span. Both these guys haunt my dreams. St. Pru is a well-rounded fighter. He's getting up there in age. He's 41 years old. He looked amazing against Kennedy Nijuku. Amazing. Like, almost too good, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but he's, you know, he throw, he's a pretty decent striker. You know, he does have good submissions if the, if the fight does get to the mat. Kind of low volume at times. Um, he can be hittable as the fight goes on. He kind of slows down, but you know, in this last fight, he looked really good against Kennedy. So especially late. And like what I said, and I don't know if he's what he's doing, but he's doing something right. Ryan Spann, though, he is probably the hit or miss, one of the top five hit or miss fighters in the UFC. Super dangerous guy, but he's also gets finished a lot as well. Uh, last three fights he got finished. Oh, oh, I forgot about the Anthony Smith fight. My bad. But that was a crazy fight, too. Very close. But tons of power on the feet. Good front chokes. Um, but like I said, he's literally just first round or bust kind of guy. And then he usually loses a decision if it goes a decision. Or he gets a first round knockout, first round submission. So um, I'm going to go Ryan Spann because I don't I think he's way more dangerous. And if he just goes in there and tries to strike with St. Pru, I think he'll be okay. But if he doesn't get him out of there in a round, a round and a half, I think o OSP is going to win. So going with the more dangerous guys in Ryan Spann, but I'm not very confident whatsoever um, in anything in this fight. Like nothing at all. I would not touch any of this fight. It's just danger everywhere and red flags galore. So let's just hope for a fun fight. Ryan Spann gets it done in the first or second round. I'll say knockout. Why not? Next one is going to be Rong Zhu versus Chris Padilla. And yeah, Rong Zhu, good striker with power. Um, he did. He was in the UFC a while ago. Um, he, he, his last, it was two and a half years ago and he's super young still. He's 24, but um, yeah, he is a very good striker. He's got good power. He likes to push forward. He is a little hittable on the feet. Um, he can wrestle and grapple as well, uh, but He's pretty, like I said, he's pretty durable, good cardio for three rounds. He's just, I think in the UFC at that time, he was a little too young, got hit a lot, uh, but he, he showed a very good durability and stuff like that. Like I said, Padilla though, well-rounded guy. He does like to push forward. He does like to go for takedowns and submissions um, when he gets the fight to the mat. He's pretty durable himself. He has been finished um, Later in his or earlier in his career, I'm sorry, a couple times, maybe three or four times. So one knockout, uh, two submissions. So I know in his last fight against James Lontop, he was able to get him out of there early. And I think he took that fight on short notice, too. So that was a good win from him. But in this fight, I'm going to go with Rong Zhu. I think he's way more dangerous on the feet. I think if this fight does get to the mat, um, it's going to be pretty close. But I think on... On the feet, though, Rong Zhu is going to be able to maybe get some good uh, good punches in, get some knock, maybe even get a late knockout, second round knockout, or something like that. So, give me Rong Zhu to win. 
Probably I'm going to stay away from this fight. Maybe look at the over if you want, but I don't know. This one's a little bit sketchy for me too. I'm, I don't fully trust Rong Zhu, especially at minus 250. I know he's looked good against regional guys that he should look good against, but yeah. Rong Zhu, I'll say second or third round knockout. Main card now. We got Trevor Peak versus Yanal Ashmoos. And we all know who Trevor Peak is. Crazy guy. Aggressive striker with crazy power. Not very technical. Very durable, though. Um, he has shown a little bit better cardio. He has shown a little bit better of a well-rounded game plan. He, he's going for more takedowns. Um, he's very tough to finish if he gets taken down. So that's good to see. And he, work, he has unorthodox way of getting back up if he is taken down so what but it works for him good for him um i see improvement with him he's not a finished product by any means but he's a very exciting fighter to watch but ash moves though you know he's a solid striker he does have good power in his hands he likes to throw looping overhand rights and he sat was able to sit down sam patterson when that happened but he does have good wrestling decent takedowns he's durable as well so this is going to be a fun fight um I'm just leaning Trevor Peak, and but I can totally see Ashmoos win this one as well. I just like Trevor Peak a little bit more with his durability and cardio, and I do think if he does take a little a couple big shots, he's going to be able to take them. And I don't know about Ashmoos. Um, I do think I know he got hurt in this fight against Chris Duncan. I think his arm was hurt. Maybe he broke it. Whatever. So he had. So we'll see what happens. This is this this is his first fight back from that so we'll see what happens but very close fight i do think this fight will be fun probably going to stay away it is close to a pick em, but maybe look at the overs i do think both these guys are super uh durable and uh maybe it's set at one and a half and maybe you can get a good line so give me trevor peak i'm gonna say decision i think this fight does go to decision so it's gonna be a fun fight for our, for uh for the whatever if maybe it's not maybe it's gonna be a first round who knows but Going Trevor Peak. Not super confident in that one, though. Next one's going to be Matt Schnell versus Alessandro Costa. Now, this one's going to be fun for however long it lasts. Let's say that. Schnell's a well-rounded guy. He's got good striking, good power. He does have good grappling and good submissions. Uh, I'll never forget this fight against Sumadarji. Amazing. He came back from from the death from the depths <laughs> and he came back at least twice in that fight and he still was able to get a finish that was in I'll, I'll always remember that fight that was crazy but um the that's his problem he's too chinny like he is just super chinny he is a dog though he'll fight for your money until he gets knocked out that's basically him uh costa very good striker he's got good combos good power in his hands he's got pretty good takedown defense so i don't think chanel is going to be able to get him down and if so he does have good grappling but he does like to keep it on the feet. He has good boxing. Um, so, yeah, give me Costa to win by first or second round knockout. I think he's going to clip him. Spoiler alert. Um, Costa has smooth striking. He's fought some very good guys. He's fought Steve Ersig. Um, he fought Amir Albazi, and it was lost. He beat Jimmy Flick like he should. And he beat Kevin Brahas as he, like he should. So, his losses aren't bad. His wins, you know, he should have won. So I like it. But it's just the striking and the power. Costa has the power to knock out Chanel. A lot of people do. So I think Costa's going to be able to touch him at one point in the first or second round. So Costa by knockout. I'll say first round. I think this fight's not going to last too long. Chanel's going to go for it. So Costa's going to be able to counter him and get him out of there. Next one's going to be another fun card or fun fight. Kyle Nelson versus Steve Garcia. Uh, Nelson, well-rounded guy, solid striking, uh, decent power, good kicks, good leg kicks. He can mix in some wrestling and takedowns, good clinch up against the cage, good takedown defense. He's very durable himself and good cardio. So like this guy is just literally good at everything. Like he's not really this knockout guy or something. Um, but what he's really good at though, is he, he's durable and he's going to drag you into the second and third round. And if you don't get him out of there early, so that's what a little bit worries me in this fight for Steve Garcia because he's a well rounded guy, but he's more so a striker, very dangerous, uh, can be hittable, can be get rocked, can get dropped, but he always gets back up. 
very good power in his hands. He does have um, pretty good submissions too. If the fight gets to the mat, he has good grappling. So, but I like his grit. He just bites down on the mouthpiece and he just pushes forward and he goes for it. You kind of saw it against um, Choi. He was trying to be more so a technical striker in the beginning, and Choi was kind of like landing some good shots on him. And then I think he just realized like a flip switch. He's like, you know what? I'm going to bite down and go forward. And that's what happened. And he got a knockout after that. So um, I think this fight can go one of two ways, but I'm going to go this way. I'm going to pick Steve Garcia. I think he's good. He's good. I like this move to lightweight too. I'm sorry, featherweight. And I think it's a little bit better for him. I think he was just a little, I don't know about the lightweight move that he tried a couple times in a couple of those fights, but um, he's looking good in his last four. He's getting good knockouts. Um, he's got the momentum, but it's going to be tough to knock out Kyle Nelson. So I'm going to say he gets him out of there. It was going to maybe, I mean, Nelson's only been knocked out, I think once or twice in his career. And the last time that was, was in the third round against Billy Q. Four years ago. So he's going to have to drag him a little deep. Kyle N or Steve Garcia to get Nelson out of there. But Garcia has that power. I'm just going to say knockout. I don't know when it's going to be. I think it's going to happen eventually. Maybe a club and sub too. Who knows? But Steve Garcia is good like that. So give me Garcia to win. Pretty cop. Not pretty. I would say medium confidence on this one. But I don't. But Kyle Nelson, man. He, he's a tricky guy. Like he's tough to beat as I look some of his recent fights. I'll go over it again. Bill Algio, Fernando Padilla, Fernando Padilla is good. Blake Builder. Meh, he's not that good. Choi. I think he would have lost that fight if Choi didn't get a, I think it was a point deduction. Jai Herbert, very close fight. So give me Steve Garcia. I think it's going to be a close fight, but I do think the more dangerous guy is going to be Steve Garcia, obviously. Co-main event now. We got Jessica Andraj versus Natalia Silva. We got Jessica Andraj. Powerful striker. She's very hittable on the feet, though. Can be countered immensely. <laughs> but she likes to push forward. She likes to be the aggressor, if you want to say. Be a little bully in there. Her takedown defense, though, is not great. When she's taken down, usually it's not the greatest when she's on her back. Uh, we've seen it in the Valentina fight, Blanchfield, um, Suarez. So she's not the greatest grappler, but she's not, you know, she wants to keep this fight on the feet because she has the power in her hands. Silva's very well-rounded. I know we haven't really seen a lot of her grappling, but we've seen mainly just her striking, but she does have good grappling. Uh, very good striker, very good kicks. Um, very technical. She does have decent power in her hands. Very good takedown defense. She's kind of strong as well for a uh, flyweight. Or I'm sorry, straw weight. Is it straw or fly? Fly. Flyweight. Um, but yeah, like I said, we haven't really seen a lot of her grappling lately or in, in the UFC yet. But on the regional scene, she's got a lot of submissions. She, I think she's got like five or six. Seven submissions. So... Don't don't knock her um, grappling. Maybe she comes in there and gets the wrestling going here. But either way, whether if she does or not, I like Selva here. I think she's going to potentially be a future champ. Uh, her striking is super technical. She's got very good kicks. She um, does well on the outside circling the cage. She doesn't stand um, in one spot for Andrade to land a good bomb. Um, she just always is moving. I know it's a smaller cage, so that will help out Andrade a little bit. But Silva's going to keep moving. She's got good cardio for three rounds. She's got good volume. And like I said, I do think if she wants to mix in some wrestling and, and tie him a good takedown, I think she'll get Andrade down and maybe get a submission. So give me Silva to win. I'm going to say by decision. But Andrade has that power that maybe it'll happen. But man, so I have not seen Silva get like super rocked in any of her fights. And she looked very good against Vivian, who's very powerful as well. And uh, yeah, I just think Silva wins this one nine out of 10 times, maybe eight. We'll just say eight out of 10 times. How about that? And the main event, very, very good fight here. Gilbert Burns versus Sean Brady. Now, Burns is a well-rounded fighter. Solid striking. He's got good power. He's got good wrestling. He's got good grappling, very good submissions, good cardio. He's been in five rounds before. He's durable. 
Um, his last fight against Jack Della, he just got cracked and he was looking good in that fight and he got cracked with a knee. So that kind of sucks for him for that one. Uh, Bilal, he got hurt his shoulder in that fight in the first round. It went all, I think it was three, was it five rounds? I can't even remember. Either way, went to decision and he already, and he only had one arm. Bilal couldn't finish him. So this guy, I know he's getting a little older, 38 years old, but. He's still there. I, you know, super well around the guy. Sean Brady is on the on the up and up. Very good grappler himself with very good submissions. We saw it in his last fight against Kevin Gaston. Was able to basically do what he wanted to with him once he got that fight to the man and got a Kimura. Um, but he does have solid takedowns. His striking is pretty good too. Um, he does want to get this fight to the mat. He he is more so a grappler, but not terrible on the feet. Um, we did see some of his fights. He does slow down a little bit. This is going to be his first uh, five round fight. So that's something to think about if this fight, if you think this fight goes a little bit later, but very close fight. I don't blame anybody picking whoever they want to pick because I can see both these guys winning. But what I keep coming back to is Gilbert Burns has been in five rounds before Sean Brady. First time. I actually think Gilbert Burns has better cardio, especially if this fight gets into the third round. What if it gets in the fourth and fifth? So I don't know if Brady's going to be able to submit Burns. Burns is a very, very good grappler. Um, and I don't know if he's going to be able to knock out Burns either because he's super tough. He's going to need something crazy like a Jack Della knee, something like that. Um, and I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Um, so I think Burns can win the minutes here, especially later in the fight. I think he can win in rounds four and five. And I... Wouldn't shock me if he outstrikes Brady. Now, if this fight gets to the mat, we'll see what happens. But I think it's going to cancel each other out, really. So, give me Burns as a dog. I like it. I think this is this is um, a good step up for Brady, and I think it's a good test for Burns. And I think Burns is going to be able to pass it. It's going to be close, like 48-47. But um, I don't see a finish in this fight. I'll be honest. I really don't. So I just think Burns is going to win the later rounds here. So give me Burns to win by decision. Very close fight, but I don't blame anybody picking Brady. He is the younger guy. Um, I just don't know if he's going to be more dangerous. I don't know who's more dangerous in this fight. I just think five rounds with a veteran that's fought very good competition. I'm got, I got to go Burns one time. I don't care if he's 38 years old. He's still He's one of those guys where I still think he has it. He just ran into a buzzsaw in Jack Della, which he was looking good until that knee. Um, Bilal was a fluke injury and, um, you know, very good fight against Chimaev. Arguably could have won that fight. So give me Burns, dog. Why not? Let's go. But all right, guys, that is it for Vegas um ufc vegas 97 thank you everyone for watching please hit that like button for me um on your way out wednesday night's going to be our defender unit show um we with uh cody from blood money mma bets we're going to go over these fights and give you our best picks and bets all that good stuff so definitely tune in then uh wednesday night so appreciate you watching hit that like button subscribe check out the patreon all that good stuff until next time happy fight night